Grandmother wants to join dead husband. My great-grandmother watched my great-grandfather die. They were truly in love forever. After he died, she woke up every morning and said, damn it. Because she was ready to pass away. My great-aunts would hear her talking on a baby monitor they set up talking to members of the family who had already passed. Finally one afternoon, they heard her go, John, finally. Why are you always late? They were frozen as John was my great-grandfather's name. They walked in ten minutes later and she passed away. She was just waiting for her husband to come get her, follow up. My great-aunts, after all was said and done, cried happy tears when they thought back to this moment. Because it was like life just kept going after death. I'm sure to my great-grandfather, it was heaven to hear his wife say that to him. Spiritual goodbye. My mom found an old picture of me with one of my late uncles. She asked me if I remembered him. He passed away when I was really young so I unfortunately don't remember much of him. She told me that he used to take care of me while both my parents were at work so we had gotten really close, he was essentially another father figure for me at the time. Supposedly, my parents were woken up one night by me crying and screaming his name. When they came into my room, they found me holding that picture of us the one I mentioned earlier. They got a call from my aunt that morning that he suddenly passed away. My mom said the only other times I ever cried like that was when my dad had to leave for deployment. She's convinced that my uncle said goodbye to me that night. Invisible friendly ghost. I grew up in a mobile home. When I was very little, maybe eight, I made a friend that lived in the floor. His name was Adam and he was my best friend all that year. He wasn't there every day and he was only there certain times of day, usually right as I would get home from school. Adam always asked me how I was and what I did that day. Sometimes he would ask me to go to different places in the house so he could hear me better, it was usually in the bathroom. I would sit in the tub and talk to him. My brother could hear him too but he lived with my grandparents and wasn't over often. Dad I don't think heard him, but Adam never talked when he was around. He wanted me to go outside a lot and sometimes I did but I never met Adam or saw him. Then one day Adam just stopped talking and I never heard from him again. I'm not sure if this is a ghost or spirit of some kind. I almost hope it was. That'd be easier to swallow than the very likely story that there was someone under my goddamn house. My disappearing aunt. This is one my grandma used to tell about one of her aunts. They lived in Laos during the Secret War. Her aunt started talking with one of the American soldiers and he started learning basic Hmong. After some time though, he stopped showing up. The basic consensus was that he was dead, but she kept waiting for him. When things got really bad and the bombs started dropping, they fled to the caves for shelter. One night, as everyone is sleeping, she hears a familiar voice. It's the soldier. He's mumbling in a very broken Hmong, I'm back for you, over and over again. Her eyes are still closed until she feels something reach out and grab her shoulder and slowly move down to her hand. When it reached her hand, she said it wasn't a human hand at all, dot but like a large animal paw. She briefly opened her eyes to see a dark figure, clearly not human though, standing over her. Then, she heard her aunt get up. Something was said but she couldn't make what it was. The figure then left and the aunt followed. This was still in the middle of the night, mind you. The aunt was never seen again. The story is that the dead soldier came back to take her with him. Or something else imitated him in order to take her. Edit, to clarify the story, the paw touched my grandma. I don't know why it touched her first. She knows it happened because they were all hiding, sleeping in the cave together. Humming ghost at Bell Grove Plantation. I have lots of stories. For now I'll share the one from when I was 10 and on a field trip. So I grew up in Northern Virginia, and we had plenty of battlefields and such to visit for school field trips. In fifth grade, my class went to the Bell Grove Plantation, which was at Cedar Creek Battlefield. Cool House, still has damage to her columns from gunfire from the battle. Anywho, my class was in the kitchen of the plantation, listening to the tour lady talk about whatever it is you'd tell a bunch of ten-year-olds about plantation life. There are these big double doors on each side of the room, and they are open. And then we hear humming coming from outside. 
The teacher's aide, who all call Bulldog cuz she looked like one, told us that whoever was humming to knock it off. But that's the thing, it wasn't any of us, and it was coming from outside. Bulldog goes out one side of the kitchen, comes back in and goes out the side that leads to the garden. She comes back in, says to the tour lady no one at all is out there, but she could hear the humming right there in the garden. Doesn't sound like much, right? Well fast forward a few years, AMD I'm reading a Ghosts of Virginia book. There's a story about Bell Grove in it. Apparently the lady of the house was found in the smokehouse one day, badly beaten, half in the embers, with clear fist imprints on her face. She dies just a few days later. A slave girl was accused of the beating and murder and was hanged for it. And the lady of the house liked to walk in the garden, and was always humming. And various people over the years was witness, I guess you could say, to the ethereal humming that would take place in the garden. That just thoroughly freaked me out when I realized I got to witness it too. My deceased dad playing tricks on us. So when I was 14, my dad died, no need to be sad about it, he was an ass. When he was alive, he loved to sneak up on people, and scare the shit out of them. One of the ways he'd do that was to just silently creep up, and chill out in the corner of your vision to you realized there was this asshole staring at you. After he passed away, I'd be sitting in the living room watching TV, and I would see him just glide up into the corner of my vision across the room and stand and stare at me from the front entryway. I'd look over, and poof, nothing there. Now this can be easily written off as me being tired, mind playing tricks on me, etc. But that isn't all of it. Dad loved to watch history and nature shows, and this was back when the History, Discovery and A&E channels actually played decent docs and biographies and the like. He was an insomniac, so he'd always be up late with one of these channels on, and the walls were incredibly thin, and I'd always have to beg him to turn the damn sound down so I could sleep when I was a kid. After he died, for a few months, at least once a week, I'd be in bed, and all of a sudden hear the TV in the living room, and it would be a documentary on ants, or a biography of Churchill, and other things. It'd spook me, definitely. My brother wasn't doing it, because for one, he's deaf and if he were to watch TV, he'd mute it, and also he had his own TV. My mom worked nights, and it always happened when she wasn't home. And at this point my sister had been living on her own for quite some time. I'd get up to see what happened, maybe the cat had turned the TV on, yay? But nope. Max the tuxedo was usually with me in bed, or outside. And I'd be able to hear the TV drone on about worker ants, as I made my way down the hallway, through the kitchen and dining room to the front entryway, and once I'd get to the spot where I could see the living room and the TV, all noise would cease. It'd be dead silent, so quiet you could probably hear a spider fart. But wait there's more. After he passed, the locked, chained and dead bolted front door would open all on its own, to let the cat in. This one happened in front of everyone at differing points over the winter after dear old dad had kicked the bucket. But the thing that really got me, is this event I'm about to tell you about. I was down in the basement one night, watching TV. My mom was home and in the living room. Whenever she needed me, she'd stomp on the floor to get my attention. And that night she stomped something furious. I raced upstairs. And she's sitting in a chair, with a wooden TV tray table in front of her. On the table, was a styrofoam cup. And it was shaking. Violently. There were no open windows. There were no fans. I picked up that fucking cup and checked for wires and strings. Absolutely fucking nothing was attached to it, making the damn thing move. I put it back on the table, and it would shake again. Mom of course, is saying it has to be dad doing it. And nothing else, the creeping visions, the cat coming in through a bolted and chained front door, and the documentaries about ants being heard at all hours of the night freaked me out as much as that damn cup freaked me out. I knew my mom wasn't doing it, I checked and double-checked. The table was perfectly flat on the floor, didn't wobble, there wasn't a way to make that cup move, and not the table itself, ya you know. It just thoroughly spooked me. And mom kept saying it had to be dad, he was a trickster, yada yada yada. So I just shout out, if that's you dad, knock it the fuck off, and it stopped. I didn't even finish saying it when the cup stopped shaking. 
After the cup incident, the cat had to wait for a real live human to open the door for him. I heard no more documentaries in the middle of the night. And I didn't ever see dad creep up in the corner of my vision to stare at me. Visit from a dead friend. A girl I knew for a few years and was very good friends with passed away in a car accident. A few days later I have a dream that she's standing in the center of the road and I'm barreling towards her. I run into her but then she appears in the seat beside me. She forces my head toward her abdomen. Where her stomach would be there's a large mouth. The teeth are made of broken glass and sharp metal. She keeps saying, shish, shish. I wake up from the dream and I'm still hearing, shish. I look at the foot of my bed and she's standing in my room. She walks through my door and into the hallway. I follow her. She walks down the hallway and vanishes through the front door of the house. I didn't realize at the time but my dad was on the couch. He asked me if I was okay and asked if the flickering lights are what woke me up. He didn't see her and I never noticed the lights flickering. My dead parents ghost upset about cremated ash placement. My parents have both passed away. Their wishes were to be cremated, the ashes put in a nice box and be set on our wine rack. This wine rack has three shelves, and I was instructed to keep one shelf between the boxes. Well, my dad passed in 2011 and my mother in 2015. It took me a few weeks to find a box for my mom. In that time I kept her ashes in the same room but a few feet away from the wine rack. Apparently someone wasn't happy about this. Outside we had a doorbell. Every single night at 3 a.m. it would begin ringing and wake me up. I took the button portion inside so nobody could push it. Still would ring at 3 a.m. Took the batteries out, still rang at the same time. Broke the whole thing apart, still rang. My dead brother befriends my little cousin. I am the youngest of two older brothers. My middle brother had passed away in 2005 and one of my cousins had given birth to a boy a few years later so he's never seen or heard of my brother before. Fast forward a few years more when the boy is old enough to talk I think like five, I guess my aunt was telling my mom that her son has an imaginary friend that he's been talking about named Michael. Now both my aunt and mom played it off as a kids will be kids sort of thing. That was until my aunt began explaining this imaginary friend and how it had some coincidental things that directly related to my brother. First, this Michael would wake up the boy at night wanting to play basketball. Kid didn't mind cause he liked basketball too but it was in the middle of the night. Secondly, Michael tells him he has an owie and points to his throat I'll get back to this later. Then the trippy part comes when my mom went to visit my aunt. She was sitting at the couch watching TV while my cousin and her son walked in. Her son was hesitant at first and then walked back to his room. My cousin went to my mom and told her, he was being shy cause he told me that is Michael's mom. I was then told if you show him a photo of my brother he points to it and says, that's Michael. Even when I went to their house the boy did the same thing and this time the cousin said, he whispered to me saying that's Michael's brother. Here's the kicker, my brother's name is Travis Michael last name redacted. He liked to play basketball in high school and he died from a freak accident at the San Luis Obispo sand dunes while riding an ATV. It shattered his Adam's apple and basically suffocated.